we should talk about some Bach. I know you're doing a write-up for Strad Magazine this yes. summer. Is it just on the sonatas and partitas, or what, what is the It's two articles. Yeah. One is, I believe, in the June issue, which is coming up shortly, and one in July. Uh, the uh, first article is on the sonatas, and the second is on the three partitas. Oh, okay. Um, and I think what I'm trying to do is to say what makes these particular works so great and an overview of what makes Bach probably the greatest composer that ever lived. Um, and perhaps that's partially answered by uh, a letter that Beethoven wrote. Beet one of Beethoven's publishers had written to him that he was going to publish four or five works of Bach. Mm -hmm. And Beethoven answered, great, in fact, Bach, the father of harmony. And I think just the more you delve into the harmony of Bach, that it becomes more than just a bunch of keys, but it is a, a whole view of self and life, of eternity, uh, it is everything in the universe, Bach has captured it like no other composer has or probably ever will. I agree with you. I, <laughs> but the I thing is, it. most performers are not really aware of that. And therefore, their performances don't have the transcendence that is really in the music. And what does an audience do? They blame themselves, of course. Uh, but it's not them, it's the performances. But I do think that especially some of the uh, Baroque specialists uh, do get it. And, and of course, there are a few on modern instruments, particularly the piano, uh, who are marvelous with it. I find with the sonatas and partitas, I don't, this might just be my thing, but I tend to, I have much more difficulty with the partitas, with the exception of the Chaconne, than with the sonatas. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm wondering if this has to do with it being a little bit more linear in terms of, you know, the partitas with, with the one line. I, somehow I have a hard time letting go or just embracing it. And I, I wondered if you had it <laughs> as my teacher, if you have anything to, to help me with that. I think that Bach is always speaking with multiple voices, even on a single line. Mm -hmm. So that if you take, let's say, the Alamon from the D minor partita, yaram ta yararoro yo yararo yaram pa yararo. It's not just one voice. Yaram pa yararoro bass, da ra ra soprano. And I, in my own mind, compare Bach with Shakespeare. That. Shakespeare has created characters and that no matter whether you stage it in a very old garb or a modern, whether it's a very up-to-date or has virtually no scenery, or whether it's done on film, uh, his characters are forever. But not only individual, but the interaction of the different characters. And I think Bach does this so that you can always be thinking whatever in terms of different characters. And, and I compare it, let's say, with the A major violin concerto of Mozart. I intentionally picked that because Mozart is skipping around. It's one voice. Mm -hmm. It's an aria. But I think that in Bach, even with an aria, it is multiple voices. I could use any number of examples, but if we take the third movement of each of the three sonatas, I think is a very, very good example of the genius, of the extraordinary differences, what he can create in what is essentially one purpose, the third movement, slow movement, usually religious and character. So if we go in order, the G minor is a Siciliana. Mm -hmm. 
yes, it is a dance, dum, da, dum, bum, okay? But it is three voices, clearly. Mm-hmm. No. You have a male voice, yom, da, yom, da, ra, 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 and then two voices, women, yom, bi, da, yom, bi, da, boom, boom, yom, boom, da, ya, ra, 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 ra. I mean, so that's very, very clear. Mm-hmm. So you have the dance, you have the three voices, two in tandem, speaking to another one. Uh, who are these people? You know, are they our, your age, my age? Uh, what are they saying? Um, and, of course, there is the harmony in addition to the dance, the voices, and the harmony. Then if you go to the second sonata, the A minor with the movement is in C major, it's in two voices, and the upper voice is going, yom, ta, ya, ra, di, ra, yom, ba, ya, Clearly an aria, mm-hmm. I would think, probably a church aria. Okay? And it speaks of eternity. It has something really infinite about it. And what does he have the lower voice on this little box of violin doing boom, 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 boom. What is boom? Heartbeat. It's a heartbeat yeah. or a clock, yes, which signifies time mm-hmm. and death. I think only Bach can mix the two eternity and something so finite and death. What an extraordinary idea and what an extraordinary composition. And then if you go to the final sonata, the C major and the third movement is an F major, Again, he chooses an aria. With hardly any accompaniment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But where he does add a note or two, he is telling you, this is where I want to go. And it has a completely different feel with each one of those chords. I mean, to think three movements, all from the same, the third movement of the group, so completely different. What a genius. And if we talk about the fugues, um, I think Bach loves to be perverse. The two that are in in minor Mm -hmm. are very, very happy. I mean, I know that we hear all the time, da, 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 da. The only problem is that Bach writes Allegro and he writes a la breve in two. And, and it starts off the beat, da, 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 which is only a rhythm. It has no melody. It's one note. So here is the conversation with four voices. Okay? Second one, again in minor. Okay. Well, how could it be anything but happy that goes... Has to be happy. But you know... People say, well, Bach is a great composer. We have to make Bach great. That, that's not true. Bach doesn't need our help, number one. He is human. And he has all of the dimensions of humanity, from, from humor to tragedy. It, everything is there in Bach. And so one needs to know, when you are performing it or listening to it, what aspect, what part of Bach's life is this? And then if you go to the third few, C major, which is often heard as though it's London Bridge is falling down. Again, there's a slight problem there. It comes from a hymn many hundreds of years old that Martin Luther adopted and it's called Kom Heiliger Geist, which means Come Holy Ghost. So we're speaking about the Trinity, not London Bridge. <laughs> Therefore, And the significance of it is that everything is written in three notes. Bach is a numerologist. So, 
And then the counter subject uh, uh, juxtaposes this rather openness of the subject is six notes, two times three, in half steps. And so you have this conflict, this contradiction between ya ya para and ye ya 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 ya. Again, the extraordinary, the imagination, the power of Bach. I think to be aware of this, to play it, and this is what I really feel I have to give to the students because I have read many biographies, wonderful, wonderful biographies of Bach, uh, but I don't really find this, certainly not in the uh, areas that the writers have covered, the sonatas and partitas. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps we'll open another chapter, maybe yes, who knows. But you know, in a world that's changing, in a world where so-called classical music is maybe on a descendancy, the faith is that nothing can or ever will replace an aria of Bach or a fugue of Bach. And so whether there are more people or less people listening to us, that doesn't matter. So long as we can have a roof and food and live reasonably comfortably and have the great fortune to be able to perform and be a part of Bach, we are blessed. We are indeed blessed. I feel this so truly. It's, you know, every time I, when I, I feel as if I'm really getting into, I was playing yesterday um, the A minor concerto, I'm teaching it. It's indescribable, this feeling that you get sometimes when it's just so much excitement and just openness. And then, you know, that is, I feel, the real beauty of this music is that you, you cannot express it in words. It has gone beyond that. And I, I do, more often than not, we always come back to Bach. We always come back to Bach. The story of an upbeat. Dum bum, dum bum, yeah. <laughs> dum bum. But even there, you know, I feel it's multiple voices. Yum bum, yum yum, yum ba da 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 yum bum, and then da 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 da, yo da da da, da 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 da, yo da da. That this bass da 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 da, and yum bum bum bum. Yeah. I mean, ready in one line. Mm -hmm. And you, and you know what? You do know this. Never underestimate the intelligence and the talent of young people 